Welcome back, everybody. You're going to have an exciting video here today. We are with Yami Abreu, and she is going to tell us about several projects she's got going on on the island, but she is an extremely talented young entrepreneur, come back to the island after 15 years abroad or in the States, working in the hospitality industry. Take to the end for a special treat on the NFT Koki collection. I mean, just say hi to everybody, give us some background about yourself, and we'll get into the different projects that you've got going and that we've got going together. Sure. Hi, I'm Yami Abreu. I have been on the island for two years after being off island for pretty much my entire life, but 15 of those years where I built my career was in hospitality. Okay. And hospitality, marketing, advertising, product development for big brands such as Sandals Resorts, Beaches Resorts, and the Hyatt All Inclusive brands. Mm -hmm. And how I ended up on the island was I came back in 2019 for my very first like adult solo vacation to Puerto Rico. And for that trip, I didn't rent a car, just kind of made the assumption that like other Caribbean islands that I had been to as an adult traveler, that I would have the access to like call Uber <laughs> or a tour guide and that somebody would be there in 10 minutes to take me to the waterfall. Not so. <laughs> <laughs> Not so. That experience um, made me realize that there was a gap in how the tourism infrastructure was built in Puerto Rico. You can come to San Juan, Condado, Ocean Park, and you can have an amazing time. There's always someone that will act as some sort of concierge to take you places, to visit this island. But once you step outside of the metropolitan area, that infrastructure is missing. And having spent all of my career before then, working on products, um, luxury products, and hospitality products. Building tourism to Mexico, to Cancun, to Jamaica, Grenada, and all these other beautiful Caribbean islands, I felt this like deep calling that I was like, wait, this is, this is my home. Mm. And my home, these outside areas of the metropolitan areas, they need tourism in order to thrive. Right. Because these economies, if you go anywhere like Arecibo, for example, where's the work? Where's the work to attract young entrepreneurs like myself to come and stay there? And, and yet, and, these are the most beautiful parts of the island. This, exactly. is, this is the area where we need to have the Uber drivers and we need the tour guides to be there. And if you're not getting off of the boat in Old San Juan, you just don't get that on this island very much. Exactly. But because of people like you coming and, and coming back to the island to bridge that gap, that kind of stuff is going to change and it's going to change quickly. There's a stated need on this island to double the tourism impact. So we're going to go from it being like six, six and a half percent of the GDP and it's going to double. Actually, they're, they're going to bring it up to at least 15 percent of the GDP, yeah. which means that there's huge, huge opportunity for someone Absolutely. like yourself to come and kind of fill in the gaps and, and meet the needs. Exactly. Tell us about Posadas, which is your platform to help people like Adan and I who have Airbnbs kind of island wide and to to give us that service. Let's talk about that. Sure. So Posadas Puerto Rico before anything is a listing platform. Mm -hmm. We have a website, we're on all of the socials and we're distributing vacation rental property through those avenues. But second to that, we're a distribution network. So when you list your property with Posadas, you have access to all of the channels that we're connected to, including Booking.com, Airbnb, Expedia, Travelocity, and the list goes on and on. Taking it back to this consolidation of services, right? I found that the main disconnect that was everywhere was, I don't know if you've done this exercise, but if you go on Airbnb at any given moment and you search for accommodations, for three nights, and you do the same thing on all of the, all of the other channels, the numbers of the inventory are so different. Mm. Air, like everyone's listing on Airbnb, right? But there's obviously pain points with Airbnb that that we're trying to address. Service mm -hmm. being one of them is when you book with Posadas, you can always get somebody on the phone, and 
we try to provide that customer service both to our host and to our guests. We're people. Now, is that something where you have an advantage because you have sort of a critical mass? You've, you've got many, many listings across the island, so they'll listen to you if you call Airbnb, where if I call Airbnb and I've got one apartment, they're just trying to get me off of the phone. If I'm, if I'm calling as, as a host, if I'm calling as a guest, they're still just trying to get me off of the phone. So yeah. <laughs> it would make sense that you would have... It actually does help with Airbnb because of the cancellation policies and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I'll find when I was listing previously in, in years past as like an independent host, I do have property in Florida that I Airbnb as well. Now that I have multiple listings, it's easier to like get decisions to be swayed more in our favor because they want obviously the <laughs> To keep the business right and for booking.com and Expedia there's a huge advantage and it's the fact that my group contracts allow me to list your property from day one with non-refundable cancellation policies and prepayment if you were to list as, as an, an individual, individual owner because they give you this whole like waiting period and right. as a host I'm sure you can understand how frustrating it is to with booking.com oh. I've heard you get there you you have your unit ready and then the guest never arrives you can't reach them on the phone you have no way to charge them and you've all of a sudden lost the revenue for those days yeah. so. that, that happens all the time right like so yeah. and, and we've got guest house so we're not just a one-off and we still yeah. have this problem so right. what you're what you're talking about and what you're what you're offering it definitely hits home because we've we've seen it like I don't deal with it on the day-to-day -day, but I know that in the surfing turtle we will have something that's booked out say maybe three months in advance and then the time comes for them to show up and they don't show up they got us on booking and booking just cancels the reservation like oh no harm no foul I'm like and hey, but like, it's Christmas this is this is the time where we're gonna make our money you know? where we were supposed to yeah another exciting project that you have is this NFT project the Koki project yeah. And you want to talk about that for us. You've got an exciting launch that's coming up in October. And I think it's going to somehow tie into Posadas and all of the yes. stuff that we've been talking about. So why don't you just tell us all about your super exciting NFT project? The NFT Koki Collection is what we're calling it. And it's at its core, it's a loyalty membership. Mm -hmm. It gives you access to vacation rental discounts for the properties that are within my portfolio. It gives you access to special events that we're having every quarter after lunch. <laughs> I've heard you really throw a party pretty well. Oh yeah. <laughs> we the party he's talking about actually, we threw a party in May in at in Arecibo. People didn't go home till June. Yeah. <laughs> Basically we had people straggling. <laughs> we had about three hundred NFT collectors, crypto traders, and real estate investors come out. And about 200 of those didn't leave till the next day. <laughs> That's a good party. So I know for the next party, I probably should have somebody that like shuts down the party. Because <laughs> I went to sleep and I woke up at 1 and there was still people partying. Wow. Was, yeah. It's at 4 a.m. we turn the lights off and everybody's yeah. got to leave or something. <laughs> but lesson cool. learned and the next party will still be amazing. Yeah. We had... um celebrity appearances. We had Gombayabari come out and play, which was really fun. We had a bunch of projects come and show their art. And that's what the kind of experience that we're hoping to build and do it quarterly so that we're doing like networking events so that the crypto traders and the NFT collectors and the real estate investors all have a, a platform, a way to yeah. connect with each other. Because yeah. that's what it's about. It's about building this community so that we can get to know each other better and collaborate, find ways that we can all contribute to building this ecosystem. Right. So NFTs. Our NFT is not only a cool art project, which by the way, if you've seen our art, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. It's really cool. We've taken an eight. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> We've taken the coqui, which is the native frog of Puerto Rico and like the symbol for all Boricuas out there and we're very patriotic. Like yeah. I'm sure you've noticed that being yeah. here. How long have you been here? Almost five years. Five years. Yeah. So in five years, what Puerto Rican have you met that isn't like Yo soy boricua. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that that is, is true for sure. Yeah, we're boricuas hasta en la luna. That's how we are. And so for me, it was important that if I was going to launch an NFT project to try to, to bring together this like ecosystem of crypto travel, that it, it represented 
Puerto Rico, wherever mm -hmm. it would land, even if it was someone in Australia minting a coqui, like, okay, coqui represents Puerto Rico. For sure. On top of beautiful art, when you mint a coqui, you'll have the opportunity to get rarities and bounties. Okay. It's a random mint. You go on our website on, in October and you click Connect Wallet, you mint a coqui. You won't know whether you're getting a hippie girl, a playero, a king, or a queen. But we've designated a number of cookies that will have special bounties attached to them. So let's say that you get King Cookie number seven that has a bounty of one E. Mm -hmm. So you sell it back to us, you've tripled your money. Right. And so on and so forth. Some of them will have like vacation uh, packages that are all included and complimentary. If you happen to mint that cookie, uh, hippie girl cookie, for example, some of them have. Um, special utilities so you'll get like free upgrades for life oh. in some of the properties but I want to I want to talk about a little bit about why we're doing cookie we were thinking of how can we realistically create a crypto travel ecosystem that makes sense that actually works and knowing what we know about the crypto traveler and being here on the island as a crypto trader myself, one of my biggest frustrations is that I can't use my crypto anywhere. Right. And so on Posadas Puerto Rico and on the NFT Koki collection, you'll be able to pay for everything. So you'll be able to pay for all parts of your travels to Puerto Rico in crypto through the Koki collection. And that includes like every touch point of tourism provider you can think of. So like accommodations through Posadas Puerto Rico, tours, to uh, special events, rental transportation, cars, right. rental cars, and we're working with different providers in the island to create that network that will provide utility to our hodlers. Did you know that it's hodlers and not holders? Hodlers, hold on on for dear life or hold something? Hold on like to dear that? life. That's <laughs> the in a nutshell, it's gonna be the hottest crypto travel club in the world. <laughs> Damn right. And you're gonna be able to enjoy these great benefits starting in Puerto Rico. Well, you'll be able to travel and pay for all of your guest experience with crypto. And it starts here. I wanna mention that it starts here, but our objective is to be worldwide by, I don't want to set a date <laughs> for that one. For that one, I have to wait a little bit. Okay. But, but yeah, we have partners that are working with us already in different countries that are asking, okay, when is Koki coming to Mexico? When is Koki coming to the Dominican Republic? And the idea is to be able to bring Puerto Rico de Puerto Rico para el mundo. That's how it is. I admire so much about you. You set big goals. Oh yeah, I'm a dreamer. <laughs> you really, you guys came to my house and did a presentation about a, a hotel project and mm -hmm. we don't even need to get into it. Yeah. But I just want to tell you that, yes, way to go. That's what, that's what we encourage this community to do is to dream big, take your goals and then yep. just multiply them. And you do that, you implement that. And I've seen it again and again. So even talking yeah. to you today, you have some timelines that are going to be aggressive. You have goals that are aggressive. I love it. That's literally how I operate, how my partners operate. We dream big. Dream big. Because and we have a, a steadfast conviction that we are worthy of the life that we want to live. We deserve it. Damn right you do. Yeah. That's awesome. And without getting like super spiritual or religious, <laughs> Like we we know that we can we have the ability to manifest mm. literally the life that we want to lead. Yeah. And everything in this universe is energy. And That's right. if we can tap into that frequency of of creation, I have a, a good friend who's probably gonna watch this video and say, I said that. <laughs> His name is Alex. <laughs> and he told me I was made in the image of my creator. And therefore, I am a creator, mm. right? And and that has always stuck and resonated with me. And, and that's why I have these like aggressive goals and big dreams and big timelines, because if I'm made in the image of my creator, then I am here to create. I right? love that. And I, I, and I love that you tell the world what you're going to do and you manifest, like you said. We have done that. We, 
we've done that. I, I've kind of been like that as well my whole life. I've, I've been a big dreamer. I've told people ahead of time these wild ideas that I have that I'm gonna do and then it puts you in a spot where you're, it's just going to come and uh, it's, it, it is truly, truly powerful stuff. So that's great. I just wanted to tell you that, that I like that about you. Now the treat. Now the treat. All right. So the NFT cookie collection whitelist is now open. 222 collectors will have the opportunity to pre-mint before anyone else. All right. I'm in. I want to be one of the 222. Yeah. All right. And Adon's in too. The advantage to doing that is that you get a preferred rate on your mint. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Everybody, that's it for this time. <laughs> we'll see you on the next video. Leave us a comment and like and smash the subscribe button for us. Thank you and God bless. Now you do it. Like. Like. Comment. Comment. And smash. Subscribe. There you go. Wait, All like. Right. Wait, let's do it. Like. Like. Comment. Comment. Subscribe. <laughs> All right. Do you want me to do that again? Did I do no, it terribly? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so better, that it's better that it's not perfect, that okay. is.